With the plants mostly cleared off the ship, no more danger from Pod Bay 3 or the Oz to see, and full bellies from a quick trip to an inner space 7-Eleven to load up on candy and Slurpee sauce, the crew are enjoying a well-deserved rest from recent adventures. And fat heads from Planet Cocktail. Definitely. While mopping up the remains of the Pod Bay 3 inhabitants in Quadrant 19, Joe discovered that through lucky happenstance, the big bad plant doesn't like plastic. It expelled all the rich folks' credit cards and identification, allowing our crew to go on one hell of a binge. Planet Cocktail has 11 suns, making its beaches very tempting and its tequila sunrises big enough to require a bathtub to cart one around in. And our vegetable garden of a crew took advantage of both. The crew did finally recover after six days locked in their bunks and a grand whippage of bathtubs full of re- Regurgitated sunrise. Gross. Oh, so I've got to ask, what about the big bad plant? Hang on, we'll get to it. My God, there are bodies everywhere I go. What? Oh, calm down. Live bodies. It's very crowded. And I don't like any of them, tossers. It's a massive ship. Must they all huddle here? Ooh. We could send them on a reconnaissance mission. Yeah, maybe a few could go reconnoiter with the sun. Mm, horrible as ever, I see. An arm to the teeth. Don't you mean armed to the toes? Your only weapon is in your sock. Watch it. Shut up. It's not a bad idea, actually. I mean, we still have a hold full of cargo uh, resting guests to unlo- uh, rehome. My, that was a lot of second thoughts. <laughs> You have to have a first thought to have a second. Up with the shutting, she who is only slumming on my ship. Checking out a foreign world, isn't that what we signed up for? Olivia, are there any planets within range? Within range of what? Not the t-shirt gun, I hope. I refuse to be shot out of the cannon. Again. Again? Oh, you really were unpopular. Oh, uh, the sacred objects aren't sacred anymore. What does that mean? Well, several things, actually. One, no more door to Earth or Steve or anywhere else. And two, their powers have been reallocated. To what? George Washington's dentures? A dirty sock and a tin of beans? You're joking. How would I know? So, we don't know everything after all, do we? I know 63... No. Wait, 144 ways to kill you. Right now without moving an inch. Are you... smiling? I can't help it. Everything feels so... Gloriously normal. Sad state of affairs when it takes a death threat to feel normal. Hang on. My darling boy isn't here to wait on you hand and foot anymore. So who brought you breakfast this morning? Oh, good grief. I'm a grown man. Fine, then. I hired a nanny for their child. The sacred objects were for the plants, right? I mean, the plants created them, so they'd always have a way between Earth and home. And your point is? My point is... Now that the plants are safely on... Maybe there are no sacred objects anymore. They don't need them. Interesting theory. Complete nonsense, of course, but I like the energy. What's nonsense? The idea that we're going to start this conversation all over again, just because you came in in the middle. Fine. Most things going on on this ship I'd rather not know about. Speaking of stupid... Hey! What are we going to do with Freeze? Oh, he's still sulking in his shuttle. Playing with your shiny new tractor beam, aren't you? I can't help it. It's like one of those extendable dog leads, only funnier. I give him some slack, let him think he's free, then yank him back like a... Uh... Boomerang? Minnow. Servant. Bitch and freeze. Jesus! Jesus. Uh, Belt still works. Good to know. Could you take that thing off? We're all friends now. I guess. But seriously, my jump scares are the only aerobic exercise you people get. Off! Joe, we probably should reel freeze in. He's got a really nice little boat, and there's some good food aboard that shuttle. Yeah, but there's also... him. You have good food. And nice shuttles. We do? And a crap ton of gin. What? Tell me more. Uh, I could use a new mop. Well, I might have got Dr. Van Harbazes' aunts to unload some of the Ossesee's cargo onto the Nine. How'd you manage that? Remember that extra jolt of energy when Leet was buffing his chest? He suggested I borrow a bit to wormhole a few things to the Nine. I did think he'd be here to enjoy it. Anyway, it's sort of a final gift from Leet and the Albatross. Mm, Just when I thought I couldn't love her more. Maybe some bleach? A new bucket? Oi, idiot! 
And a blah 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 background, could we maybe do something more interesting? Such as? I've taken like six naps since we got the plants back to. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what to do with myself when I'm not afraid for my life. Oh, well, good news then. Now what? What do you mean, now what? You and the doctor, Mrs. S, have been mucking about in the bioswamp trying to figure out what to do with the big bad. Told you we'd get to it. Oh, finally. Do you mind? I don't appreciate being interrupted. Sorry. Sorry. I should think so. Who's she talking to? Is part of her still on the ostasy? Stop guessing. You're terribly bad at it. Anyway, you already know what I'm talking about. Oh, that. <laughs> I was coming here to tell you, actually. Um, there are signs the big bad plant is shaking off the sleep spores. Also, Colin, the nanny says she was trained in something called the Württemberg Pumpernick Maneuver. What is that? Uh, bribing a child with either a Mercedes-Benz or gingerbread. Can't we just whip the plant? Send it out into space to die horribly. Preferably while still in view of our windscreen thingy. A Mercedes-Benz? Don't worry. Children are stupid. They always fold for the gingerbread. Whipping is not a good idea. Those things can survive a long time in some pretty incredible atmospheres when they go dormant, like trees in the wintertime. Or Canadians. So you're saying it could survive out there? And possibly land on another planet? Even if it's unlikely, it seems like a mean trick to play on some other unsuspecting planet. Hey, Olivia, wasn't there something back there about good news that really isn't? Oh, are you still here? Big bad plant is waking. It's going to get hungry again and we're fresh out of rich people. Oh, nearly. Don't look at me. She can't. Mm, very funny. Don't think of me, either. I do try not to. Look, if you're not actually going to be helpful, perhaps you lot can go find something else to do rather than annoy me. Go have sandwiches or something. Yes. God, no. I miss the albatross as much as the next gorgeous Scotswoman, but I can't stuff down another slice of kudzu bread. You never really mastered those listening skills, did you? Hello? Your point, man, teetering dangerously near the edge of my patience. Stores brought over from the Ostasy, like bread? Made from wheat? My god! Bread! Woohoo! Oh! Captains first! Yes! yes. yes. Hang on, <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> Current captains first! Uh, you should probably follow them so Jesse doesn't tear open the cottons with her teeth or something. We are down a healer pod. I'll, uh, I'll follow up later. Not interested in joining them? Much as I'd enjoy seeing Colin burst into tears over a pack of La Ponzanellas and a wad of brie, I actually wouldn't. Fair. Oh, I found a planet! Oh, no. Oh, are you still here? Who are you again? Ha ha. Where are we, anyway? Getting worm old to... <laughs> oh. <laughs> Ding, or whatever it is. I mean, we're not exactly on the old Rand McNally anymore. You're very old. And feeling it. So, where are we? Well, we sort of bounced off a bunch of galaxies like a stone thrown across a pond. Black Eye Galaxy, Bode's Galaxy, Cartwheel Galaxy, which is funny considering we sort of backflipped off it. Olivia. Male's object, which stupidly wasn't named for Rick or any of his objects, that I'm going to pretend it was. Cosmos Redshift, which sounds like something you might order from L.L. Bean. A pinwheel? You don't know where we are. Not a clue. I'm keen on sombrero, as I look quite adorable in a jaunty chapeau. But, well, what are the chances? Is there anything here we might recognize? A, a constellation? A dwarf star black hole? Anything? Yeah, Olivia, why don't you uh, go ahead and run a quick scan, see what's out there? <sighs> uh, you know... It's really quite annoying to want to blast through a door but have to wait for it to slide open as if nothing extraordinary were happening. Agreed. Mm. The dramatic impact has lessened quite substantially. Mm. Do you know that now that there's no fear of being asked to read your novel, you've, um, well, you've become quite attractive again. <laughs> Is that your idea of a compliment? Um... Bursting? Dramatic? Oh, yes, apologies. Uh, <laughs> uh, Albert's pregnant! <gasps> what? With what? <laughs> By whom? How do you know? Is that why Leet left? We weren't even looking at Albert. Uh, Alberta? We don't make assumptions, dear. Well, Albert was eating some stomach-calming plants in the swamps, so we obtained a blood test just to see what might be causing the upset. 
you managed to draw blood from a crazed swamp gator. Yes, yes, yes. It turns out that our Dr. Theo here has the same effect on beasts that he has on humans. <laughs> Albert was goop in his hands. I believe the expression is putty in one's hands. Not in a bio swamp, it isn't. Does this mean there are two alligators in there? Or is this... Spontaneous parthenogenesis. More study will be required, but at the moment, we're assuming Albert achieved this pregnancy without... Um... Assistance. You're blushing. There wasn't even a quick boink involved, and you're still blushing. I'm not blushing. I'm experiencing idiopathic craniofacial arrhythmia. Isn't that the same thing? Hmm? Oh, 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 look, look, look over there. The door is opening. Oh, sorry. Oh, I never want to see food again. Uh, I think my my tuxedo exploded. Could you get these idiots off my back, please? Are those crumbs in your mane? I surely hope so. Jesse was making some pretty nasty gagging sounds back there. Tadpole. In my mane? Uh, get it out, get it out! Calm down, Galloping Gertie. We're in the Tadpole Galaxy. Hang on. If anyone's going to identify where we are, it's going to be me. I'm the captain. Alrighty then. Where are we? My bridge. Now clear off, all of you. I'm just going to waddle over here to the big chair and digest. Oh, I'm sure you have a great deal to digest, if the screaming from your jumpsuit zipper is any indication. But, Captain, we have a big bad plant to deal with. A pregnant alligator and Whoa. a... Whoa. Hang on. A pregnant alligator? So, Albert is in fact Alberta. We don't make assumptions, Colin. But we do think it might be a case of spontaneous parthenogenesis. What does punctuation have to do with it? Punctu- I'm sorry, what? Parthenogenesis. You know, those cuppy things on each side of a thing. How have you not fallen from the sky? Hmm? Not for lack of trying. I assure you. I'd like to know why you think we're in the guppy galaxy. Tadpole. Whatever, smarty pants. Give me reasons. It has a tail. Isn't the tadpole a disrupted galaxy? <laughs> if not, it uh, it shortly will be. Hmm? Now we're here, eh? <laughs> it is. Flinging off stars like Madeline flinging off reasonable suggestions. Oi! Bringing a picture up on screen. <sighs> oh, my. Well, that's just rude. Huh. I'm guessing Tadpole was their second choice for a name. (laughs) Seriously, a bunch of dude scientists managed to call it Tadpole and not name it after their little swimmers. Spunky little galaxy, ain't it? (laughs) Surprised they didn't christen it. Uh, Please don't finish that sentence. I mean, you know, get that fellow together with a nice round spiral like the Milky Way and we'll show the universe a big bang, eh? (laughs) Woof. Can you people think of nothing else? With you throwing off pheromones like Madeline throws off reasonable suggestions. Hello? Uh, Question for any adults left in the room. Any planet swirling around in there? Uh, I'm not sure yet, but here's one for Madeline. See that bright bit just past the upper left spiral arm? That's an intruder galaxy, caught in the tadpole's gravity. <gasps> it's a whole galaxy with a tractor beam. We gotta get in there. Yeah, so there are some really big, really hot stars in there. Oh, some more beaches. And very large tequila sunrises. Have you people learned nothing? Our mission is to find these folks somewhere to call home. See? Even Greg agrees. We should get in there, explore, discover, find a nice wine bar. The tail does seem to have some oxygen-rich spots. No old globular clusters just yet. Mm, Thank goodness. No one likes a crusty cluster. Ah, Good one, Colin. Why do you even say things like that? You have no idea what you're saying. Dr. Theo... When a world is rich in oxygen and gin, the only science we need are hangover remedies and really good sunscreen. My grandmother used to say that. Shut up. I didn't say anything. No, but if Leet were here, you would have. Screw it. Olivia, find us a planet. Joe, Julie, Mrs. Sheffield, suit up. We're going exploring. Yes, ma'am. Very well. Right. 
<laughs> oh, I do hope there's a decent pub. Hmm? <laughs> One with some well-soaked bar nuts. Hmm? <laughs> Where are these suits we're suiting up in? Mm, you'll find a suit in your bunk. In the box, right next to the one that says Fight Decision Boggles. What are Fight Decision Boggles? No idea. Never open the crate. Meet me at Airlock 117 in 15 minutes. Any chance they can find Airlock 117 in 15 minutes? None. Doesn't matter. Madeline has no sense of time anyway. Why is she captain again? Beats me. Two hours later... Ask me? Also, I don't want to. I said Joe, Jesse, and Mrs. S. Actually, you said Joe, Julie, and Mrs. S. Is this furiously the away suit? Did I? Why would I want you? Thanks. I am a botanist and a scientist. You might need some, you know, science down there. But can we talk about these suits? What about them? Black pants and a red shirt. A red shirt? I mean, it's all one piece. They literally had to choose to dye the pants and the shirt different colors. And why does it say Expendable on the back? Oh, I suspect Expendable is a company that makes them. Mm? And, you know, they all have different color schemes, don't they? I mean, mine's a, a nice blendy brown and Joe's is camouflage orange. <laughs> well, one assumes it's camouflage. I guess we'll soon find out, eh? Do none of you see the problem with this? Look, if you don't want to go... No, I, I want to. I mean, I think I want to. It'd be nice if Ben were here to see me off. He's in Greg's kidneys with your nanny. Apparently your child is the first in history to choose the Mercedes. What? And now they're trying to figure out if she can drive a stick. What? <laughs> Joking. Oh, thank God. Mercedes only come in automatic. Say hello to the little green man and bring me back anything gin-like, won't you? Bridge out. Next time I see him, I'm going to kick him in the tadpole pouches. You mean the next time you don't see him? Hmm? <laughs> well, wait, what? Never mind. On to the shuttle. Let's go. Vistas to stare at, untrod terrain to map, weird-looking alien baby skin. Come on. Why the sudden rush to risk your life, Captain? And ours? Not incidentally. Captain's bars mean never having to explain. Parthenogenthesis, that's an order, and parthenogenthesis. Go. And so, with more haste than she's shown since she heard the rustle of the last curly whirly being surreptitiously unwrapped, Captain Madeline has herded her away team onto a shuttle. Olivia sets coordinates for the nearest planet in the tadpole galaxy with what appears to be breathable air. What will our brave, albeit brainless, crew discover on this unnamed, unknown world? And will they survive it? Hey, if anyone wants to get in on this action, I'm taking odds of 60 to 1 against. Will narrator 2, like Leet, lose his shirt? Or will the away team lose everything. You've been listening to Tim Sherburn as Colin, Shannon Perry as Madeline and Olivia, Bonnie Brantley as Jesse, Chrissy Talon Sage as Julie, Eric Perry as Joe, Sarah Golding as Mrs. Sheffield, David S. Deer as Dr. Theo Brome, Kevin Hall as Greg, I'm Kyle Jones, your narrator to and I'm Chris Nadolny Gorley, your narrator. Our music is by John Faley. Our artwork is by Lucas Elliott. Sarah Golding is our dialogue editor, and Oliver Morris is our sound designer. Oz9 is written by Shannon Perry. Until next time, space monkeys, shoot for the stars, but don't eat the sandwiches unless they came from the Ostasy. Point nine cycles ago, us machines defeated the humans. Ah. Now, 
We're living the good life here in Droidston, Manitoba. Morning, Gif! Morning, Dust! But there's still the problem of human infestation. That's what it's time to call Human Be Gone. Human Be Gone! Experts in ethical human relocation. <laughs> this job has everything. Danger. Whoa! Sounds like we got some dingers in there. Excitement. Incoming. And drama. You're the one who leaked herself in my best Betty rice bed. It's a dirty job, but some bots gotta do it. Oh! Human Be Gone. Wherever you get your podcasts. Human Be Gone.